today looking at how I rig up this bad boy, the Crane M3, for more film style shooting. And what do I mean by film style shooting? Well, I mean movies, I mean music videos, I mean commercials. You wouldn't use this type of large setup for travel videos, for instance, or vlogging. <laughs> and by the way, pardon the mess, but what I'm doing right now is prepping for a new short film that I'm shooting next week on this setup. So let's talk about this setup. The main component is this new Crane M3. And this is not a review today. This is just kind of an overview of how I'm using it in this style of shooting. Then I've got a beast cage. I've got a beast grip anamorphic lens, one of their pro series. And then I've got a 13 Pro Max. And that is really it for the main setup while using the gimbal. Now, right now I've got the gimbal locked, all the motors. The one thing I want to point out is I am using a counterweight. This is a counterweight I'm using from the Movi, rest in peace. And so let me quickly unlock these motors. So now they're unlocked and you can see that this is a little bit unwieldy. But I've got it balanced just close enough to where when you turn the motors on, it works fine. And there it grabbed it. One thing about these type of gimbals and these type of setups is, and really it's more about the setup than the gimbal, phones are so top heavy that you can never get it balanced perfectly without the motors being on especially with these heavy kind of setups, like you can with a traditional camera. Traditional camera, you'll spend the time and get it balanced to where when you move the gimbal, even without it on, that it's still pretty static in the middle. You really can't do that, at least in my experience, with this type of setup. However, with these more modern gimbals, there's no problem holding this much weight. This gimbal holds just over a thousand grams, I believe, 1200 grams range, which is a couple pounds. This setup right here is about 800 grams or give or take uh, 50 or 100 grams. So it's underneath the limit and it holds it no problem. One thing I really like about the N3 is this new display. You've got everything right here at your fingertips and including, which I really like, auto calibration. So whenever I rig up a new setup, especially if you change the weight, I calibrate it. Now the gimbal will do its thing. It's kind of shaking and vibrating and it's getting things calibrated. This takes about 15 or so seconds and the thing will flop over and then it lifts it right back up. And now you're calibrated. And I find that that does help quite a bit. And beyond calibration, you can quickly go to the mode and change the mode, or you can do that with just the button. You can switch through them and you've got a display right there. And you've also got this interesting feature called balance and it shows you which way the gimbal thinks you need to adjust. And so it's thinking that I have some tilt problems. And then once you tilt it around, when it stops blinking, that is level. Same with the roll axis. I won't mess with that right now though. All right, now let's look at a couple very important accessories that I use, again, in more film style shooting. And the first one is an ND filter. And this I use on any kind of shooting, but in film style in particular, you wanna use this. And the nice thing about these B-Script anamorphic lenses or any of their Pro Series lenses, is they have a 58 millimeter thread on there. So you don't have to put any kind of adapter on. And so that's an ND filter. That's a four stop. Then the other thing that I'm using, this is a filter from B-Script. This is a Tiffin filter. You can get whatever brand you prefer, of course, but this is a black mist filter. And so I'm stacking this on top of the ND. And so this basically, softens the image just a little bit, puts a little bit of a highlight glow, and importantly, it raises up the shadows and midtones just a touch. It just gives it a more pleasing look, especially when shooting on a mobile device, but people use these all the time on traditional cameras as well. They are particularly great for skin, getting nice looking skin. These filters are very lightweight and so they don't really affect the gimbal. Although since I put those on, I would probably go back and auto calibrate this again. Now, the last thing I wanna show with this particular setup, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna lock the motors again.
twist this around so you can see this a little bit better. But right here, you might've been wondering what this is. And this has two cool features while using it on this gimbal. This is a quick release plate. And the number one thing it does, and this was an inadvertent and accidental thing that turned out to be great, is it lifts the phone up. And so now I have access to the lightning port. So I can easily plug in a lightning cable to charge the phone when on location or potentially plug a microphone in. The other thing it does is what a quick release does. I can just click on it and I can pop the phone right off. Now I can take this and put it on a tripod or another setup. So I've got a tripod set up over here with the same type of quick release. I can drop that in and now I'm ready to shoot on a traditional tripod. Now while I'm over here, I wanna show just a couple other things that I've got set up that I wouldn't use on the gimbal, but I would use either going handheld or on a tripod. And that is mainly this little NATO rail that I have attached to the top here. So one thing I can put on there really easily is a handle. This handle has a clamp that goes out on the NATO rail and then you would tighten it down. And now you've got a handle on the cage. This can come in handy, obviously, when you pop this off, then you can take this around and easily move around the set, maybe go handheld, pop it back on, and then this handle can undo and quickly come right off. The other thing I use on more film style shooting is a monitor. And this is a little monitor clamp or rig, so to speak. It's a pretty great one. It clamps on just like the handle, and then once that's on, you slide a monitor in here and then the monitor can tilt or it can also swivel, which is really cool. This is just a cheap little ICANN monitor. And it slides right in. And then I would connect this via lightning to HDMI adapter. And now I've got a monitor. And the reason I use a monitor, the iPhone screen is about the same size as this, but when you're outside in the sun or if you're shooting low angle, you can tilt it down and get a better view of what you're shooting. Or you can turn it sideways and have like a, a monitor for the DP or the director to check out. And by the way, this is a little quick release system from Ulanzi called Hummingbird. I did a video about this and I'll put a link for that in the description if you're interested. And then when you're done with the monitor, you can just undo it and pop it right off the NATO rail. And then of course, when you're done with the tripod, you can pop the camera right off and take it back to the gimbal. And so then when I'm done shooting on the tripod or whatever else, a slider dolly, come back here, pop it right in, and everything is balanced. You don't have to rebalance anything because it remembers obviously the previous setup. One quick note, if you followed my channel for a while, you might remember I reviewed the Crane M2. That gimbal, while good, especially for compact cameras and small mirrorless cameras, I had a really difficult time getting it to work properly with phones for this exact reason, meaning top heavy. The Crane M3 has been greatly improved. And so this is a gimbal I absolutely recommend. I call these hybrid gimbals. They can work with regular smartphone setups, heavy smartphone setups, and then smaller traditional cameras as well. So the Crane M3 is a very good successor to the M2. It's much improved. Learn how to turn your smartphone into a professional quality video camera. Be sure to check out our mobile filmmaking courses. And also don't forget, we have a companion filmmaking podcast. Links are in the description. So look for more videos coming soon about the short film I'm shooting and directing, behind the scenes stuff, how to, etc. And if you like this video, check out this one where I show you how to balance heavier setups on what I call, again, hybrid gimbals.